Richard, a member of the Orpington congregation, and today we're looking at Genesis 36. Um, it's interesting these days that a simple swap at home can tell a story about us, thanks to the wonders of modern technology. Um, a little swab of the mouth can tell us where we're from, where our ancestors are from, and fascinatingly where, if, if you have any unknown relatives um, who have also taken the test, um, people have found there's relatives who they didn't even know about. And knowing who we're from, um, who our ancestors are, is an industry, it's a hobby, and it's a constant source of inquiry and conversations with others. Um, I'm part Irish, I'm a little bit Welsh, um, otherwise English, um, my wife's Pakistani, um, but of course from what once used to be India, and our children are both. Um, so it's a very interesting um, topic of conversation um, that we always find ourselves in. And ancestry is important as it helps us to know who we are. And recording the story of the descendants of Abraham is a big part of the Hebrew scriptures, um, the part we call the Old Testament. Through understanding uh, what happened to each person, we are shown Jesus, the saviour of the world, the chosen one, the anointed one, and the deliverer whom the world was waiting for. And Genesis 36 puts us uh, bang in the middle of history. Uh, people had been chosen under the anointing of Abraham, and the story is in mid-flow. This chapter describes the descendants of Esau, who we're told is the father of the Edomites. So why is this particular recording important? And I've got two very short points to make. The first is knowing who you are. In chapter 25, we're told that there are two nations in Rebekah's womb and that one would serve the other, so Esau would serve Jacob. And reading the history of the descendants of Esau gave the descendants of Jacob a clear understanding of who they were and why they were different. In contrast to Esau, the descendants of Jacob were blessed by God to be a blessing to all nations and therefore called to be separate from other nations, including that of their near relations, the descendants of Esau. And while the Bible is full of descriptions of nations, races and kingdoms, the modern application of reading a passage such as this uh, is not the promotion of national or racial separation because it's not the end of the story. It's an encouragement that if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have been separated from the world and have been given a calling to live differently from those who do not believe. There's a separation that leads to others wanting to know more of what you have. Jesus, the saviour of the world, knowing who you are in Christ, not only draws you away from living like others, but it also means that you can be a blessing to others as well. So point one, knowing who you are, you're different, you're set aside, and you're one with other believers. And point two, God knows what will happen, so listen to him. Uh, when God said in chapter 25 that one would serve the other, God was revealing what would happen, not necessarily setting in place a destiny for Esau, because I believe in a God who works through mankind's sin to bring about his plans and purposes. The division, uh, separation and subsequent tension, death and destruction that happened between Jacob and Esau <clears throat> was a, as a result of sin uh, yet, um, and, uh, and destruction. Um, God said to the Israelites in Deuteronomy 23 verse 7, Do not despise an Edomite, for the Edomites are related to you. They're the descendants of Esau. Um, the history of the people is, of Esau is important because through the interaction that occurred in history, God was shown to be right all along about what happened. He showed them what was going to happen and he worked within the limitations of humans to not only make Jacob succeed, but also to an extent Esau succeed as well. Of course, choices were made that led to sin and death, uh, but even this God knew and had a plan to deal with a plan that finished in the birth, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So that is where uh, my devotional ends and I'm just going to pray. So thank you God that I can come to you to know who I am. I'm your creation. I'm made to know you, to rest in you and be known by you. Thank you that I'm safe in you. You see me all the time and my eternal destiny is in you. I can have an ever increasing knowledge of you, living and working for you empowered you by you and with you you know all things and i'm listening to you today amen